Ottoman Empire, one of history's most powerful empires. Nearly a hundred years ago, the world witnessed the decline of one of the most powerful, prosperous and long-lived empires in history. Today on History Dat, we look at a kingdom that was able to defeat the Byzantine Empire to establish a dominion that spanned centuries. How did a semi-nomadic tribe become a mega empire? Join us to find out. Rise. The Ottoman Empire has its roots in a semi-nomadic ethnic group dedicated to cattle breeding and trade. Some historians claim that this tribe inhabited the steppes of Central Asia in the surroundings of Turkestan so they could have met the Muslims who pursued the Silk Road and adopted Sunni Islam as their religion. The first encounter between this tribe and the lands that years later would be their domain would be through a recruitment of the Abbasid Caliphate to fight against the Byzantine Empire. The Ottomans climbed rapidly within the Caliphate's army, gradually growing in popularity. Around 1243, a Mongol invasion commanded by Batu Khan destroyed the Seljuk Sultanate that controlled the territory corresponding to Iran and Iraq. After this invasion, some autonomous principalities emerged, and one of these principalities is popularly known as the first official Ottoman state. According to some historians, this principality was born even before the Mongol invasion, and it was the Seljuk Sultan himself who ceded this right to the Ottomans. The first member of this dynasty was Ertugrul although it is his son, Osman I, who is credited with founding the Ottoman dynasty. Expansion Already settled in Anatolia, the tribe led by Osman I began to conquer the surrounding region at the end of the 13th century. The conditions for the growth of this tribe were just right, as the empire that had ruled the east for centuries was coming to an end. Osman led several raids on the weakened Byzantine Empire to increase his dominance in the region, and by 1299 declared himself supreme leader of Asia Minor. After his death, his descendants continued to attack the Byzantines. His immediate successor to the throne was Orhan I, who managed to gain enough power to defeat his close enemies. The key to this was the conquest of Nicaea and Bursa in 1331. These conquests allowed him to consolidate the nascent empire and wipe out neighbouring enemies. Between 1360 and 1389, during the rule of Murad I, the Ottomans began to make their first conquests in Europe. The growth of the Ottoman army was so great that the Byzantine Emperor undertook to pay tribute to stop Ottoman attacks on Constantinople. But this situation did not last long, and the Ottomans conquered the dreaded and unconquerable Constantinople after repeatedly besieging the city. The fall of the mighty Constantinople marked the end of the Roman Empire in the east, and consolidated the Ottoman Empire, which quickly incorporated several territories under its rule. The Sultan in charge of this conquest, Mehmed I, moved the capital of the empire to Constantinople and named the city Istanbul. Political Organisation Mehmed II's political desire was to create a gigantic empire capable of embracing Mongols, Christians and Muslims. To achieve this, Istanbul was populated with people of different origins. He even took two risky decisions. To let prisoners of war go free and to allow different faiths within the capital. Logically, this freedom of worship was somewhat limited, and it was the Sultan himself who selected the religious leaders. Under this same government, some institutions characteristics of this empire were created. In addition, they took some Byzantine principles of hierarchical organisation to separate the Sultan from the people and to exalt his figure. In order to avoid the disintegration that had affected other Turkish empires, Mehmed and his successors established the principle of indivisibility of power, which places the entire ruling class under the authority and will of the ruler. Linked to this principle was the law of fratricide, 
which considered of assassinating potential challengers to the throne who might endanger centralized power. Broadly speaking, the political structure of the empire was as follows. The royal palace consisted of two parts, an internal one, which served as the residence of the Sultan, and an external one, which was the seat of the central government. Here, different administrative functions were performed by the Grand Vizier and his officials. The Grand Vizier served as a kind of prime minister, and was a position often held by the eldest son of the Sultan. Many of these laws established by the sovereigns are described in the Kanumani. Economy Due to their privileged geographical location, the Ottomans became an indispensable part of the trade between Asia and Europe. In the beginning, the only thing that could compare to the power of the immense Ottoman Empire was its prosperity, and they obtained large amounts of money due to exports and transport services. This allowed them to be completely self-sufficient economically, so they were able to finance their campaigns without problems. Although the export of art and food was very large, it was proportionally similar to the income they obtained from transporting products for other countries on the spice and silk route. But in addition to trade, fishing and agricultural activity played a very important role in the economy of the empire. Army Like many aspects of the founding empire, Mehmed II had an enormous influence. He established the first military structure of the Ottoman Empire, after reorganising and restructuring the army that his father Orhan I had created earlier. The classical army established by Mehmed II was a fundamental building block in the growth of the empire. The training of Ottoman soldiers began at the military college, where they were educated for two years. This training was directed only to loyal members who belonged to official military corps of the empire and not to hired mercenaries. The mercenaries were called Bazi Buzuk, a Turkish word meaning disorganized or lack of leadership. These troops were at the bottom of the military hierarchy scale. In contrast, there were the Janissaries, the elite troops of the empire. They were highly trained infantrymen so they were entrusted with the custody of the royal palace and the sultan, so they can be considered a kind of praetorian guard. From this unit, two other military corps were detached, the Yerlika and the Kapikulu, who were in charge of defending the city and its surroundings. As for the cavalry, the Sepoyas were at the top of the hierarchy, as they were elite soldiers with a status similar to that of the medieval European knights. They were paid directly by the sultan. Decadence. As we've mentioned in other videos, every empire eventually succumbs to the passage of time. The Ottomans achieved an unprecedented expansion thanks to their policy of strengthening new rulers, making them serve in the position of Grand Vizier so that they could gain experience and come to power with ambition. After the death of the legendary Suleiman I, who brought the empire to its peak, the reins of the empire were left in the hands of his son, Selim II. This event is, according to several historians, the beginning of the decline of the empire. As Selim II was the first of a long dynasty of sultans who decentralised power. Selim II devoted almost his entire reign to art and poetry and entrusted the task of ruling to the Grand Vizier almost entirely. This triggered the next sultans to devote themselves to enjoying royal privileges and neglect their governmental duties. So the people began to have less and less respect for them and paid their allegiance to the Grand Vizier, a position that was no longer held solely by the sultan's firstborn, but by people from his inner circle. End of the empire and birth of Turkey. Political intrigue within the palace the strengthening of neighbouring countries, and therefore economic competition, were some of the factors that led to the end of the splendorous Ottoman Empire. By the 19th century, it was nicknamed the Sick Man of Europe, due to the reduction of its territory and its economic recession. The situation became untenable as the years went by, 
So in 1906, a party called Young Turks was created to reject the government of Abdul Hamid II and to pressure him for political reforms. Although the government banned this association, the people's rejection of the Sultan was so great that Hamid II had no choice but to give in to their demands and promulgate a new constitution. But this truce between the ruler and his people did not last long, as he tried to reassert his power by assassinating several intellectuals of the time. A series of bad decisions ended up destroying his public image, and it was his brother, Mehmet V, who was put in power on April 27th, 1909 through the Young Turks, who had more and more power. Soon after, the First World War came and finished destroying the empire in almost every aspect. On October 30th, 1918, the Ottoman government accepted the Mudros Armistice and withdrew its troops from the war. In 1922, the Sultanate was abolished and the end of imperialist ideas in Turkey was declared, giving the beginning of the Democratic Republic. I hope you liked this video about the Ottoman Empire. We are aware that in 10 minutes, we've left a lot of information to put in, but I hope you liked this summary. Don't close the video yet. Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us grow and continue making much more content. Now, without further ado, we say goodbye.